So we're going to continue straight on from the last video detailing how the coagulation cascade works. Heparin is a cofactor for the activation of antithrombin. This acts on many points in the coagulation cascade, inhibiting factors 12, 11, 9, as well as 7 and 2A thrombin. So you can see it works on all parts of the coagulation cascade, the intrinsic, the extrinsic and the common pathway. Heparin has a quick onset but a short half-life, so it is most useful clinically for situations where you require immediate anticoagulation for situations such as a pulmonary embolism, acute coronary syndrome, a myocardial infarction or deep vein thrombosis. However, it is also used in pregnancy for anticoagulation because warfarin cannot be used in pregnancy as it's small and crosses the placenta. When you give heparin, it is useful to monitor the PTT or partial thromboplastin time. Side effects of heparin include bleeding, obviously, and thrombocytopenia, osteoporosis, and other drug drug interactions. Um, an important kind of thrombocytopenia caused by heparin is called heparin induced thrombocytopenia, HIT, where you get development of IgG antibodies against heparin binds to platelet factor 4, PF4, and together this complex activates platelets and causes thrombosis and thrombocytopenia. The good news is the effects of heparin can be reversed with an antidote, protamine sulfate, which is a positively charged molecule that binds negatively charged heparin and takes it out of the system. Nowadays in hospitals you'll find that standard heparin is now mostly replaced by low molecular weight heparins such as inoxaparin and daltaparin. These will act more on factor 10A than at standard heparins and they also have a much longer half-life, up to two to four times longer and thus a greater bioavailability. The benefit of this is that they can be administered subcutaneously and don't need to be mod monitored um, with the laboratory. However, they aren't as easily reversible as standard heparin and thus you cannot use protamine sulfate in, in situations where you require rapid reversal. Another important anticoagulant that you need to know about is fondaparinux. This is very similar to um, low molecular weight heparin, but it's actually a synthetic pentasaccharide factor 10A inhibitor. These are all drugs that a junior doctor will be prescribing frequently, so it's useful to become familiar with dosages and treatment regimens. Inoxaparin is generally given as 1 mg per kilogram subcutaneously, 12 hourly. The dosages of Fondaparinux depend on the patient's weight. For patients weighing less than 50 kg, one would normally give 5 mg subcutaneously a day. For patients weighing between 50 and 100 kilograms, one would give 7.5 milligrams, and for patients weighing 100 kilograms or more, one would give 10 milligrams subcutaneously every day. Generally, with the use of anticoagulants, the important thing to remember is to monitor the patient's INR and to keep an eye out for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia.